All right, well, good, uh, I guess, afternoon now from Madeira Beach. I'm joined here by uh, Secretary Alex Kelly from Florida Commerce, General Haas, Florida National Guard. We've got Senators Roussan, DeSigli, and Hooper, Representative Steele, Burfield, Jacques, Cheney, Anderson, Holcomb, uh, Gonzalez, Pittman as well. And then uh, where's Patronus? Is right here. he here? Okay. Patronus is here as well for the um, uh, state CFO. We, um, so as of right now, all Pinellas County, anyone that can receive power has power restored. I know they had hundreds of thousands of outages just in here alone. Uh, if you don't get have power, it's because there's something with the receipt at that point. So there's a hundred percent of the accounts are, are going uh, totally in the state. Uh, we've had three, two point three eight million restoration since the storm hit, and they're down to twenty thousand uh, that are out um, in the entire state. Most of that is the electrical co-ops in the Big Bend region. Some of that is just because they had to do total rebuilds of some of the electric infrastructure. Uh, but bottom line is uh, we had a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of people that had outages had them uh, back within 24 to 48 hours. And then even hard hit areas had it in less than a week. So I want to thank everybody who was involved in that. Obviously, we pre-staged this. We believe time is of the essence to get people back on their feet. Uh, but we've had a lot of support uh, in that vision from our utilities, not just uh, the private ones like Duke and FPL and Tico, but also the municipals and the co-ops. Uh, they accepted a lot of mutual aid that was brought into Florida. So, so thank you for doing that. That's making a big difference. Uh, we've been able to make repairs to, we didn't have a lot of damage of infrastructure in terms of bridges and roads, relatively speaking for a storm this magnitude. Uh, but, you know, we were down in Bradenton Beach, Anna Maria Island, Longbow Key area, and you had Golf Drive there that um, had damage, had massive amounts of sand, and uh, that was gonna be a potentially weeks long effort. We did an emergency repairs uh, and opened it up within 48 hours. So that is open for that entire stretch. Uh, and you had five feet of sand in some parts of that of that uh, road, which was really, really difficult. So all 16 miles uh, were cleared at the beginning of the week. And I wanna thank everybody at FDOT who was able to do that. You know, here in uh, Pinellas County, Gulf Boulevard, uh, Florida Department of Transportation, they've removed 50,000 cubic yards of sand. You see all this sand that gets brought in with the storm surge, and you still have some piles I see that's been put on the side a lot of that's been uh, hauled off. They're going to store that, and then if the community's wanted for beach renourishment, you can bring the sand in and do beach renourishment for your dunes. But bottom line is that brought a lot, uh, and so they did a really good job to be able to help with that. I'd also just say, you know, I, I, I was in Pinellas County, you know, after the storm, but then just driving around again, and we went to a bunch of different spots just to see people are out working. Uh, and not just like crews that are working for government or contractors. You got people out there uh, fixing up their homes, getting the garbage out, getting the debris. The business folks are out. And, you know, this was a lot of damage here. But I'll tell you, people are making progress. And you can see that just from where we were a few days ago uh, till we are, all are now. And that is not necessarily the usual way these things go. Sometimes it just sets in. Uh, there's a lot of uh, demoralization and things aren't getting done. There's people out and about here. That's one of the reasons why it's important when you have a storm and people evacuate that they're allowed to get back to their businesses and property uh, and homes as soon as possible uh, because they're out there doing the work. So uh, I was really impressed with what I've seen in terms of the, the, um, uh, the progress. Really, really positive. Now, Pinellas County, we in the state of Florida have provided, based on requests, uh, he just here in the county, 326. Park. They make barbecue, they serve it for lunch. We've been up in the 
Big Ben with them, great organization, they're doing a great job. Laundry services facility in Reddington Beach, five generators for lift stations and water treatment facilities in St. Pete, three vac trucks to pump floodwaters, four ambulance strike teams to support Pinellas County EMS, and power restoration of four hospitals and a hospice center. So we're, we're happy to fulfill those missions. Uh, we'll continue to be offering support as new needs arise. Now, you have people back, people going to their property. There's a lot of things that are in flux right now. Uh, just know anybody out there that thinks they're going to take advantage of this situation, uh, you got another thing coming to you. We are not going to tolerate any looting, any types of criminal activity on the backs of people uh, that suffer damage on these storms. Obviously, we wouldn't accept it anyways, uh, but we actually have even stronger enhanced penalties when people try to do this stuff on the heels of a major storm like this. So just understand, uh, this is a law and order state. You don't want to try anything like this uh, because you'll end up um, in the clutches of Johnny Law pretty soon. Got a, a couple of announcements. First, as you see behind me, we've got Walmart bringing a lot of donated supplies. So this truckload has cleaning and household supplies that can hand out to impacted residents in need, including work gloves, rakes, mold removal and prevention kits, toiletries, cleaning supplies, garbage bags, and more. Uh, in addition to that, the Division of Emergency Management, as well as Volunteer Florida, are coordinating with volunteer organizations to offer free muck and gut services for residents in the area. Uh, so this will help clear the homes of debris and irreparable building materials like wet drywall and rotten wood. Those organizations here today include Team Rubicon uh, and the United Methodist Committee on Disaster Relief. We've also got the Southern Baptist uh, uh, Disaster Relief organizations involved in different parts of the state as well. So especially for some of the elderly, uh, you may not be able to go in there and, and, and rip out your drywall. I know some of these places, you're talking about feet in terms of the storm surge. Uh, these organizations uh, will help. And we're also working on, purchase. We, we started a program a couple years ago where we can purchase some of the supplies that you need to do things like this in bulk from places like Lowe's and Home Depot. A lot of times they'll give us a good deal. Sometimes they'll make donations. And then an Operation Rubicon can just have all that they need and then just go to work. So that's really, really important, and we're glad that they're doing that. Now, you have people that, has, that have had their homes rendered, rendered uninhabitable. Some homes in, in the storm have been totally wiped out, particularly in the Big Bend part of Florida. There were homes that made it through Idalia, even though that's where the storm made landfall back in 2023 and had almost no damage. Some of those, some of those same houses were totally wiped off the map. I mean, you go, there'd be like a concrete slab nothing left and so uh that may not be the case in every part of florida but certainly where the where the place made landfall you also though have when you have places like the barrier islands out here in pinellas county you got feet of storm surge you know, you are going to have to muck and gut the house uh even if it's not a total loss uh you are going to be displaced for a certain period of time so we believe and have always believed that when that happens the last thing that homeowners and property owners need to be worried about is paying property taxes. So what we've done traditionally is I do an executive order to suspend it, and then we'd have the legislature come in and ratify it. Re more recently, we signed legislation that makes this something that is automatic to where you do get your relief from property taxes uh, when your home is rendered uninhabitable because of a natural disaster. So we are going to be doing that on the heels of Hurricane Helene. So I have directed the Florida Department of Revenue to reinforce and distribute guidance to property appraisers to prorate property taxes for homeowners who lost their residence to Hurricane Helene. And this is not just people whose entire residence was washed away. Uh, if you have things like muck and gut, we are gonna have the guidance where you will qualify for that and you can claim uh, this refund. So to apply for a refund, 
a homeowner can submit an application for catastrophic event tax refund to their county property, property appraiser where the property is located. Impacted homeowners will have until March 1st of next year to submit this. You can find this document and download it at floridarevenue.com. Uh, but relief doesn't stop there. We also have several businesses up and down the Gulf Coast and Big Bend who were damaged, uh, while long-term support will continue in the months ahead. Providing immediate relief is important now. So at my direction, Department of Revenue will be issuing emergency order to extend due dates for several state taxes like sales tax from October to November of this year for businesses located in FEMA declared counties, including those located here in Pinellas County. Uh, we want businesses to focus on taking care of themselves, focus on rebuilding, not on sending money to the state government. We've got enough money. I mean, we've got big surpluses in Florida. Uh, so focus on your business and we can put punt that deadline into the future. Travel trailers. If you want a travel trailer, and there are some restrictions about where you can put it. I mean, we want, we strive to have people be able to put it right on their property. That may not be allowed in every instance because of things beyond our control. Uh, but bottom line is, if people have to rehab their homes, and it could take weeks or even months, you have a place where you can stay and you could work on property and get it done. So if you want to request a travel trailer, temporary travel trailer, you can call Hope Florida, 1-833-GET-HOPE, 1-833-GET-HOPE, and you can apply for a travel trailer. We've already brought hundreds of them and deployed them. We've got, I think we've got 1,500, 1,700 travel trailers just in the state program. You probably can qualify on this in FEMA. Problem is FEMA is not going to get you a travel trailer within a week of the storm. It's going to take probably many weeks for them to turn it around. We can turn it around a lot quicker, and that's what we're going to do. We do have Hope Florida buses in Dixie and Taylor counties. Uh, Dixie's at Horseshoe Beach uh, and Swanee, and then Taylor's at Steenhatchee Community Center. We also have Hope Navigators in Charlotte, Pinellas, Pasco, Sarasota, Lee, Hamilton, Madison, Swanee, and Taylor counties going into neighborhoods directly impacted by the storm to offer support. And again, Hope Florida is kind of the node for people to be put in contact with all these great groups like Operation Rubicon, uh, Team Rubicon, like Operation Barbecue for Meals. All these things are going through our Activate Hope program. So it's a great thing to do. Uh, get on there, let them know your needs, and I guarantee you somebody out there in the volunteer space wants to be helpful. We do have individual assistance, of course, approved for Pinellas and many other counties, and you can apply for that uh, by going to the, the FEMA re website, and that is federal, so that's not something that the state of Florida has any control over, per se. We want them to be very quick on everything they're doing, but, but obviously, I think if you look at how this response went, this was uh, the prep and the immediate response, this was overwhelmingly state and local. And that's how we view it. We don't want to be waiting on the feds. We want to be able to lean in. Now, on individual assistance, when those get turned around, uh, hopefully they do it very quickly because I think that, you know, sometimes you'll have programs and there'll be resources, but the bureaucracy can just grind it to almost a halt. And by the time people get whatever they're entitled to under the law, uh, it's lost its effectiveness. You know, what you can get in your pocket now is really going to make the most difference. Now, Florida Commerce has activated our Florida Small Business Loan Program. $15, or, uh, $15 million is available. It's a $50,000 up to zero interest loan, and there's not even a set repayment plan, so it's going to be very flexible. Not going to be very many deals you get that are probably better than that, so I'd urge you to do it if you need it. Uh, even sole proprietors can do the $50,000 program. So if you want to apply, go to floridajobs.org uh, backslash EBL, floridajobs.org backslash EBL. Uh, so far, Commerce has approved 55 emergency bridge loan applications uh, up to, which is a, a amount about $2.2 million. So we got a lot more to distribute, but uh, they're turning those around very, very quickly. If you want to give to a charitable fund, we have the Florida Disaster Fund 
that has been activated. It's a tax-deductible contribution, floridadisasterfund.org. That will then use money to be able to assist as the needs arise. So, for example, we're using some of the Florida Disaster Fund to help some of the school teachers in the Big Bend. We did it with Ian. We did cops. We did all kinds of things. So whatever comes down the pike, Florida Disaster Fund can donate to an organization that's going to make a difference for people that, that need help. I think as most people know, we had a very uh, a quick response to the storm in terms of rescue operations. All the assets locally and at the state were deployed for that. Uh, there were thousands of successful missions that were, that were discharged. Uh, but fortunately, uh, a day into the storm, a little bit, maybe 48 hours, uh, we just did not have requests for any active rescue situations. And so whether it's Chinook helicopters, whether it's some of our riverine uh, teams at Florida Fish and Wildlife, uh, those were basically sitting idle. You look up north to North Carolina and the mountains in the western part of the state, a place that has a lot of Floridians that go to over the summer, uh, we have sent that under Operation Blue Ridge to help stabilize and rescue operations in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And so far, we've had um, rescues of a mother with a young baby. They've dropped supplies in in different communities that have been cut off. We have FDOT deploying a team up there with 7,500 7, feet of temporary bridges. Uh, we have Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, yesterday. Uh, our folks made contact with a community of 100 family, families that were stranded without access to food or water. Team airlifted in rations, clean water, and fuel. Uh, and they've done tens of thousands of pounds of food that they've dropped in to different parts in Western North Carolina. So I want to thank everybody who's done that. Uh, that is a very difficult situation because when you're cut off, it's harder to get the relief in and people... You know, they can go a few days, but after you get beyond that, things can get very, very dicey. So I appreciate Florida stepping up. They've already made a difference, and they'll continue to do so as long as there's a demand for that. Okay, we're going to hear from um, Alex Kelly, Florida Commerce, and then uh, Jimmy Petronas has an announcement. Well, Gov Governor, thank you so much, um, and, and, and thank you for this opportunity. A little closer, Governor. Thank you so much, and, and thank you for this opportunity just to elaborate a little more on um, the response and recovery for our businesses around the state, uh, throughout the state. And Governor, first, just thank you. Um, you you've, you've moved with velocity and purpose, uh, and you've charged us to do so to help businesses throughout the state, uh, and that matters because we know that for each one of you, including those who we just met walking down the street here, we know that every day counts, uh, and it's important not just to reopen quickly for you, for your employees, but also to have the confidence that uh, your state leaders who are here who are here today are here with you and are going to see you uh, through that process. I also want to say, Governor, you mentioned Hope Florida, uh, the First Lady's initiative. I want to say thanks so much for um, the partnership that we at Florida Commerce have had with Hope Florida. We so oftentimes uh, co-locate our resources in different parts of the state uh, because Floridians who have potentially, after a storm, a complicated variety of needs, oftentimes those Floridians also have concerns about uh, either their job that they can't go back to uh, temporarily, maybe permanently, uh, or they're concerned about their business. And so we've had a great partnership uh, in, in that regard. Governor, you mentioned uh, the emergency bridge loan program. Uh, I can say this um, because we did, we did the research. We've never, the state of Florida has never uh, mobilized its emergency bridge loan program for small businesses as quickly as we have for Hurricane Helene. So this is without a doubt the fastest deployment of really working capital that small businesses need, uh, whether you need to pay your and having that working capital in the bank can give you some confidence to reopen. Again, the governor mentioned those loans are 0% interest loans, uh, so there's no risk uh, involved in taking those. Um, and our team is working uh, till midnight each night to process those applications. Uh, we uh, again the governor mentioned 55 approved already uh, about 300 in hand as of when we were traveling over here uh, so we're moving quickly um, with those um, and and i can say too 10 of those 55 loans are actually here to businesses in pinellas county um, so without a doubt pinellas county has been the greatest participant 
in that loan program. It, it's not surprising too, because we also launched a business damage assessment survey. Uh, and We've had nearly 1600 responses from impacted areas uh, throughout the state. That business damage assessment survey gives us a lot of important information. First, to connect with those businesses, let them know the variety of services that we have, the state has, our partners have that might help them reopen and reopen with confidence. Uh, but like, likewise, that business damage assessment survey is used to determine the places that we need to be quickly, not just Florida Commerce, but all agencies working with the governor, working with everybody here to determine really where those hot spots of need and priority need are. Pinellas County businesses actually represent well more than 20% of those responses. Pinellas County is the leading county to respond. Uh, businesses here have given us more feedback than any other county in the state. Your neighbors in Hillsboro uh, are second, and really this region, Manatee, Sarasota, Pasco, uh, we're hearing a lot from businesses here, and it's incredibly helpful. You can take that business damage assessment survey at floridadisaster.biz. Again, floridadisaster.biz, biz, B-I-Z. Uh, almost everything I'm saying today is available uh, at floridadisaster.biz. Um, we've been doing Florida Commerce, we've been doing door-to-door -door business canvassing in a number of counties across the state, including in a number of, of rural and remote communities to really, if, if a company can't or couldn't maybe get online right away or couldn't get to their phones right away, we've been going door-to-door -door in a number of those counties. Um, and we've been doing so oftentimes, as I mentioned earlier, in partnership with Hope Florida, really uh, ourselves and DCF giving feedback uh, as we encounter residents, business owners who have varying types of needs, and then deploying to different communities all throughout the state, uh, and we'll continue to do so. Um, so as you, as a community here, as you have feedback, um, if you go to floridadisaster.biz, our phone number's there, our email address is there, uh, maybe you're okay, but you know your neighboring business uh, is, is in peril and needs help, uh, any bit of information is incredibly helpful, um, and we take action quickly. Uh, and deploy a team uh, to canvas those neighborhoods, talk to those business owners, uh, and find out you know, what kind of support is needed. We've also, frankly, been on the phones. We've been doing it the old-fashioned way, too, uh, calling those communities where maybe there aren't as many of your sort of larger big box change, but there's more smaller businesses. And we've been on the phone with close to about 2,500 businesses now throughout the impacted areas, finding out, A, if they're open, and B, what kind of help they need, and really using that to assess the kind of support they this kind of support they need you know in so many communities it gets overlooked particularly a lot of rural communities out, out kind of away from here but in rural parts of the state you know that that dollar tree that ace hardware that busy bee location that might be the lifeblood of the community and so reaching out to those businesses is critical to assess uh, what kind of services are, are needed we are also we i should say we also launched um well we launched a, a surge of, of business and employee related supports starting yesterday uh, in three counties and today in three more counties and over the course of a nine day period in 17 counties um, throughout the state including Pinellas we launched a surge of support in partnership with our career source boards from around the state and also the state small business development center network uh, to really collectively as a group um, surge in communities and and cluster and provide that opportunity for businesses that need any kind of uh, advice or guidance on reopening, the financial support that the governor mentioned, uh, or the employees themselves who maybe have maybe have a former employer who they can't go back to work for and they need a new place to work, they need to fill out a job application, maybe they need some new job training. Uh, so we, Career Source, the State Small Business Development Center Network, uh, yesterday in Franklin, Wakulla, and Jefferson counties, uh, all co-located, we're gonna be there in each of those counties uh, for three days today, we opened up in Lee, Sarasota, uh, and Charlotte counties. And this weekend, we're going to be here uh, in Pinellas. We're going to be here Saturday and Sunday conveniently um, all day long. It, uh, we're going to be at the Career Source uh, in Clearwater. So we're going to be uh, at 2312 Gulf to Bay Boulevard in Clearwater at the Career Source location. Again, our sales, Florida Commerce, Career Source, and the State Small Business Development Center Network. Uh, so uh, if someone's looking to, and someone really needs to have a, a sit down and a conversation about their business, the kind of supports they need, our experts, our subject matter experts are going to be there all day long uh, to support those kind of needs. And again, for many of you who maybe have employees who are looking for answers too, uh, we'll be there for them as well. Again, all this information that I'm saying is on our website at floridadisaster.biz. Um, 
you know, and to that end, if you go to floridadisaster.biz, uh, beyond the business damage assessment survey, again, there's also a link there to the emergency bridge loan program. We're also doing daily, 2 p.m. every day, private sector business calls. We have been since the day after the storm. Business calls were literally private sector partners and associations from around the state that probably represent and support many of the businesses here, like the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. They're on those calls every day at two o'clock, providing the latest intelligence that you might, you might find beneficial for this community, for your reopening or other businesses that, that you're supporting. You can also go to that website. You can find our phone number, our email address. So if you have something to share with us, something to ask for from us, we're, we're hearing from businesses at that website asking for some of the same resources and materials the governor was requesting. Governor, when we were in Horseshoe Beach yesterday, some of the very resourcing that came for that site came from businesses in that community that went through our website, contacted us and said, this is what we need to open. Uh, this is what we need to support. So we're there and available 24 hours a day to reach out. The last thing I just want to say, um, you know, Governor, you said it uh, several different ways, but th this is a big team effort, um, uh, ser you know, serving the state, uh, helping businesses reopen, helping employees uh, get back on their feet. Um, and, and, you know, you pointed out Walmart earlier, um, we, you know, all of this is in partnership with Comcast, Spectrum, Home Depot, Lowe's, Publix, Walmart, Chick-fil-A, Winn-Dixie, Wawa, the Salvation Army, Visit Florida. It really is a tremendous partnership, and that is something that I think is just unique about Florida, is that uh, we don't we don't sit back. We, we race to come together and figure it out and help our neighbors. I, I, we saw an example, Governor, yesterday in, in Horseshoe Beach that uh, I thought was amazing. Sunset Bar and Grill, this little bar and grill that is a complete muck and gut. Uh, it's it's going to be a while before they get back on their feet. And nonetheless, in the middle of that, um, they, they pulled every resource they had, every bit of food they have, and they were serving food for all their neighbors in the, in the community. I, I think that's representative of why Walmart's here. I think that's representative of a lot of the partners we have. Um, and you know, with that, Governor, just again, I want to thank you for your leadership uh, in pulling us all together so quickly. And I'll turn it over now to CFO Jimmy Petronas. Thank you, Alex. Good afternoon. It's times like this, times like disasters like this, the one thing I appreciate about the governor the most, he has no patience. The type of response that we have seen from his resources in this state have been nothing but short of a miracle because his team work around the clock 24 seven to make sure that the citizens of this state suffer as little as humanly possible. Governor, thank you for your leadership. Those out here that are in the process of filing an insurance claim, this is gonna be critical that you're paying attention to what I'm about to tell you. Starting on Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we will be doing an insurance recovery village. We'll be at the Clearwater Parks and Recreation Center. That is at 1501 North Belcher Road in Clearwater. It's going to be important. If you do not know what type of insurance you have, please come. If you don't know if you have contents, if you don't have windstorm, or if you have flood, auto, come to us let us help you solve your insurance claims process. We'll have about 42 different insurance carriers there, and I have told the insurance carriers, if you are going to participate in our insurance village, you must write checks on site, okay? So what will happen is you will come up, your home is not stabilized, you're not stabilized, you have a claim that you have started, the insurance carrier will literally write you a check to get you stabilized. And I can't stress enough, you do not have to sign anything to get that check. You should not sign a single document from anybody that approaches your home. If somebody approaches your home and asks you to sign anything, politely tell them no. My law enforcement is in every single neighborhood in the affected areas of this state running off the bad actors that are trying to get in between you and your insurance claim. This is what my office does. 1877 my flcfo call that number but more importantly if you're watching this and you've had effects from the storm come to our insurance village in clearwater friday saturday or sunday bring whatever documentation you got if you got photos on your phone bring it we're going to start the rebuilding process and we're going to start that by getting money in your hands from your insurance carrier lastly what i want to point out to you this is a storm surge event. This was not as much a windstorm, but a storm surge. 
One of the threats that we're very concerned with is lithium ion battery technologies. That's EVs, golf carts, uh, you know, scooters. These devices do not mix well with salt water. We've had 16 fires already in the Pinellas Tampa Bay area from EV related flood effects where the device has caught fire and we had some circumstances where the house has actually burned down. The EVs, about six of them so far, have set houses on fire. If you own an EV, if it did have flooding, the best thing you can do is call your insurance company and then have it towed away. The tow truck operators will have a safe place to take it while your claim is being settled. But what you don't want to risk is that lithium ion battery to product in your garage on charge and now the power's turned back on. It creates what's called a thermal runaway. That means it will burn until it doesn't have any fuel left. You can't put it out with water. Ultimately, that could lead to harming you, your household, or a first responder. So please understand those items and salt water do not mix, and you need to take an extra precaution as we have already had a series of fires that are lithium ion battery related. Again, please do not sign anything. If you sign something, if you show up to our insurance village, we've got two windows of time, 10 and 30 days. If you have signed something, we can help you get out of that document that you have signed. You can always hire an attorney. You can always hire a public adjuster. You can always hire public help. Take advantage of what we're doing for you for free. You pay us to do it. Let us do our job. Governor, thank you. Okay. So we, um, we've got the tax rebates for property. We don't, shouldn't be collecting property taxes from people that have had this type of damage. So make sure that you file for that. Make sure you get your rebate uh, accordingly. You know, we're going to be uh, issuing guidance to all the property appraisers. And uh, we want to be very aggressive at providing that relief. Uh, and the law is what it is. And if there are circumstances that don't fit in the law, then, um, you know, report that. And we'll, we'll look at doing an executive order and getting the legislature to ratify that when they, when they come back in after the election. So, uh, so please take advantage of your property tax rebate. Uh, we want you to do it. You're entitled to do it. And it would be wrong to collect taxes from somebody who's not even able to, to use their home as a result of damage to the storm. Final thing I'll just say is I see a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier, working really hard. I see a lot of progress from uh, the initial uh, reports and my initial survey here a few days ago. So um, just understand that's not necessarily normal. Sometimes the, an area gets hit and I mean, it could just be devastating. And, and no progress could be made for weeks or even months sometimes. So you got a lot, you got a lot of momentum here. You got folks local, state. Uh, we're going to be involved in all this. You know, we want everybody to get on their feet. But at the end of the day, um, this was a tough event. But you also have the opportunity to live or work in one of the prettiest places in the country. Uh, I put the beaches here up against any place in the United States. Uh, and when I tell people about Pinellas beaches and they come, they always tell me how much they like it. A lot of people think like all the beaches are on the east coast of Florida. It's like, no, you got to go to over here. And when they do, they love it. So this is a treasure. You are going to be able uh, to, to do great things here. Uh, so keep the faith. It's not going to be easy, but people are working really hard. And we'll get there. We'll get it done. All right, any questions? So we'll, we'll look at all the different requests. When Ian hit in 2022, that was at the end of September, we had an election coming up in November, and we were able to, to make some accommodations. And so I think we will be doing something. Uh, the question is, is what? And I got to look, I got to vet it, but we're going to basically continue uh, to be consistent with what we've done in past practice. And uh, so I haven't looked at the specific request. I know Cord Bird will look and give me a recommendation. So you very well may see something done relatively soon um, if there if there is if there is something that needs to be done. And I know some people think there are. So we're reviewing it. Well, 
I think a lot of it is just there was a lot of damage, right? I mean, the storm, if you look at if you look at the Pinellas beaches, I don't think the storm got within 100 miles. Uh, and so, as Jimmy said, it wasn't as much of a wind event as a, as a water event. Uh, but then you look at where it made landfall as a category four. And I talked about some of the homes being totally obliterated, but there's like a 40, 50 mile stretch there where there's not that many homes relative here. You've got a lot of property. So there's just a lot of damage that was done. And when you're talking about rehabbing homes, muck and gut, uh, that is something that, that just takes some time. So that's why we've got Team Rubicon. There they are right there. That's why we're bringing in supplies and buying supplies so that people are able to do this as quick as possible. But I do think that because it's a more populated area, you know, there's a limited number of people. If you need to hire someone, there's a limited number of people that can do that. Uh, and so we just want to make sure people are able to get this done as quickly as possible. One of the things I'm concerned about is potentially these ports getting hung up. I think it's totally unacceptable to try to intentionally deprive people of the supplies they need to be able to rebuild their homes when they've been displaced at, an, at a natural disaster. We should be doing all we can. The federal government should be doing all they can to make sure all the supplies continue to come in here unabated. And there is the prospect of things that are critical for the rehabbing and recovery of here and other parts of Florida that may get hung up uh, in some of this work stoppage. So now is not the time. You already have people that are reeling. You have people that are on their backs. Uh, let's do everything we can to accelerate the relief. Make sure that they have the equipment. Make sure they have the supplies that they need to be able to rehab their properties and rebuild their homes. We are looking at, if there's anything as in terms of the Florida ports and, and my responsibility and, and authority as governor to facilitate. Uh, I'm not sure that there is, quite frankly. I mean, because some of these things are contracts and you've got different stuff with, with feds. So we'll see. But anything I can do, I'm going to do to make sure that the supplies continue going. But that is a big concern. I mean, just think about it. This is tough anyways, because you got a lot of different property that needs uh, that needs attention. Uh, but if all of a sudden this stuff starts getting backed up and it starts getting delayed days, weeks, or even more, you know, that's going to be intolerable. So we have an emergency situation in our country, not just in Florida, but in Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee in particular. So we should be doing all we can as Americans to make sure that the supplies are continuing to be delivered to our ports and delivered to where they need to be so that they can get put into practice. So I'm committed to pulling whatever levers I can to make sure that that happens. Uh, but I think it would be really, really bad luck uh, for the Biden-Harris administration to allow supplies to just be sitting uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, just on ships that are just idling when you have people, not just here in Pinellas County, but up our entire Gulf Coast and Big Ben uh, who need it. So it is a concern. Uh, it's not something that will be good if they allow this to happen. And I'll do whatever I can to avert it. So I think it's going to depend on on the business, on the home, on the damage, and I don't think it's going to be uniform. But what we're committed to doing is getting rid of any red tape or bureaucracy that would inhibit a business from getting back uh, to business. So, for example, if you have we were in Steenhatchee up in the Big Ben, relatively small community, got hit by Hurricane Idalia. After Idalia, I go to Roy's Restaurant, great seafood joint there right on the water. And they were providing relief. They had some damage, but not much. This time, Roy's Restaurant is basically gone. Uh, total destruction. So, you know, these are folks who are resilient and they take it in stride and they want to put their best foot forward. So they want to be able to use a mobile kitchen to be able to serve folks in the community. Well, there's restrictions in terms of whatever the laws and local regulations. And I said that's unacceptable. 
set up your your mobile kitchen set up your your food truck do whatever you need to do to get back on your feet uh, and so we'll clear whatever roadblocks are there under my uh, emergency authority and i know if we have to make legislative changes uh, you'll see that but but those are the types of things we want to do so that will be you know so they're going to get a food truck at roy's they're going to be they're going to be cranking there i mean that's not a hundred percent back because i got to rebuild the restaurant but they're going to be able to generate revenue it's going to be important for the community to have a landmark that's operating so there's a whole bunch of different ways to kind of approach this it may be incremental in some places but i think the important thing is is we've worked really hard to have a very quick response your local folks worked the state agencies and so you're in a position uh, to be able to get this done sooner than in many other parts of the country you would have been and so we're just going to keep pressing forward yes sir So the, the debris is uh, something that either the city or county has the debris contracts for. Uh, I think the, the dump sites are likely county managed. I'm not sure if that's true everywhere. I know it is in many places. And so um, you know, we've stressed the importance of, of rapid debris removal. I'm seeing people are setting out their debris. I mean, massive amounts of debris. We wanna get that off the street. First of all, if we have another event then the debris is going to end up going everywhere. And we do have some weather brewing. People don't necessarily know what's going to happen, hasn't formed. Maybe it doesn't impact Florida. Maybe it's just some rain. Who knows? But we're still in hurricane season. And particularly the beginning of October is, um, is a time where there's high frequency. So we're not out of the woods with that. So I think the debris is a priority. What I've told Kevin Guthrie, our Division of Emergency Management Director, is Obviously, debris is a, is a municipal county issue. They have contracts. We told them, make sure you have your contracts lined up. But if there are ways that, that we can be helpful from the state to accelerate, we want to be helpful. So, for example, we are leading efforts in different parts of the state to remove the water debris. You have some places, you know, you guys didn't have as many total washouts as you did in the Big Bend. But these homes just fell into the water, a lot of them, washed into the water. Uh, boats everywhere. So, you know, that debris needs to be cleaned up. And the water debris is very challenging. So we're doing that. We're putting resources on for that. But the debris removal uh, is something that's reimbursable. We've also utilized, and we probably could do something here, the low security, low risk, inmates department of corrections they do prison labor anyways so they're bringing them to do debris removal the good thing about that is you can use that on private property not just on public you know there's bureaucracy involved with this debris i mean i become very well knowledge <laughs> you know well well versed in this unfortunately because but if there's a debris in the street, you can get it, FEMA reimbursed. No, if you're in like a private community, then it becomes more of an issue, right, in terms of reimbursements. These guys can go in on private and they can do it and it's basically almost for free. So we're utilizing that. So I, I believe the debris is a priority. I told Kevin, you know, lean in on the debris removal. Uh, he is doing that, but a lot of these sites um, are likely going to be sites that are going to be controlled by local. If there's any de de uh, Department of Environmental Protection, you know, I've told them I want you guys facilitating the removal of this debris. It's very important to do. Uh, first of all, you could have the businesses open if you have debris. It's just not good Phil, uh, in terms of the overall mood. Getting that debris off helps bring life back. Uh, and so it's important in and of itself, but I think it's also important to lift people's spirits. So we're here to help. We think it's important, and we're willing to put resources uh, to bear to uh, to get it get it done quickly. Yes. So it, it, it it's the state is mandating that the county do it. We have statutory authority that we've done. Um, we used to do executive orders to suspend it. And then the legislature would come in and pass a special bill to basically rebate it. But then we did, I think a year or two ago, we just did permanent now. You are entitled 
to get the property tax relief when you have a, a major event like this? It is... Um, when, when it will, will be, yeah, I think it will be. Yeah, yeah it will be. So you're, if you file by March 1st, uh, it will be reflective. You will get a rebate based on this year's, uh, this year's tax bill. So it's good. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate all the hard work.